Are you ready to meet the higher, wiser you? Would you like to be guided by your higher self through everyday activities? If yes, it's time to learn how to channel your inner wisdom. Well, it's not gonna be easy, but it's definitely worth it. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you six simple ways that I've been using to pump up my intuition. Let's get started, shall we? The first thing I want you to do is to honor your sacred body. What does that mean? It means respecting and being self-compassionate to your body, which you rent for this life. Whether that means eating well, exercising, sleeping, or even accepting your body appearance and stop comparing yourself to others. Remember that after all, we are all just part of the universe who use this life and this body to help build this world. So if we treat our bodies poorly or give it a lot of junk like alcohol, caffeine or negative self-talk, we won't be able to see or connect with the world inside and outside of ourselves. Now I know that you may see this glass of wine here, but I just have this disclaimer that I only have one or two glasses every night. Also, I want to give you another example of mine. Around four years ago, I started feeling nausea when I ate meats. So eventually, I quit eating meats completely. My emotional state has got so much better ever since because I guess I no longer consume those negative energies that are stored in the animals who have gone through a lot of suffering. I still eat seafood though, and the truth is I crave for them sometimes. I love sashimi and sushis. So even though I have always wanted to be a vegetarian or even a vegan, I listen to my body and honor its choice. I hope it doesn't surprise you that if you take well care of your body, then you will have a clear mind, which is essential for you to receive insights from your inner wisdom. Another thing you have to do to channel your inner wisdom is to prepare your mind for that. But exactly how do you do that? Well, learn the different ways to get into a semi-sleep state, which cause theta brain waves to occur. In case you don't know, theta waves occur whenever you are in a light sleep, dreaming, relaxed, meditative state of mind, aka when you are on autopilot. When these waves occur, your stress levels go down and your body functions more harmoniously, which is excellent for hearing your inner voice more clearly. That is why personally, I like to invite my inner wisdom when I'm meditating. The first thing I want you to do is to find activities that raise your inner voice volume. So what do I mean? Essentially, what I'm saying is you need to identify the activities that help your inner wisdom get louder. It could be visualization, journaling, yoga, meditation, or any other thing. These practices should quiet your mind and engage your heart and energy. Another way to find out which activities work for you is to check in with yourself on which chakras are slightly shut down or smaller. Although it may take some time for you to give your chakras a check in, once that information is known, you can operate from there. For example, I have smaller roots and sacral chakras. So I try to ground myself by connecting with nature more and painting so that I can feed my creative side. For those who don't know much about chakras, they are the seven energy centers in our bodies that correspond to our certain nerve bundles and organs. If these energy centers get blocked, we may experience some physical or emotional symptoms related to that chakra. For example, if you feel like you are having a creative block like me sometimes, it may be because your sacral chakra is slightly blocked. One more note on this. If your inner wisdom builds and intensifies during a certain practice or activity, especially if all other thoughts fade away, then you know that's the activity that you should do more. The fourth thing I want you to do is to invite your inner wisdom to show up. This one is quite self-explanatory, I hope. See, if you want your friends, siblings, parents, or any other person to come to your house, you have got to invite them over. Right? Try taking a similar approach with your inner voice. Your inner voice will only get loud when it knows you're open and listening. So 
Whenever you want guidance, take a moment to invite your inner wisdom to show up. I like to ask myself, what would my higher self want me to do in this situation? Or on those days when I feel disconnected with my higher self, I ask angels or the universe, what should I do in this situation? Prepare yourself an undisturbed environment and clear space for this exercise. I like to burn some essential oils when I do that. Sometimes I might even do that after I have staged my home in order to eliminate all the negative energies. Or if you need some extra help, you can use angel cards or oreo cards to receive spiritual guidance. Of course, you can also use the tarot cards, but to me, they require the knowledge about the deck. So I use my angel cards, which usually give me more straightforward answers. The fifth thing I want you to do, which is really important, is don't let your mind take over. Well, that's easier said than done, right? Not really. While it's true that the act of battling your mind tends to just invite more mental chatter, there are some ways to keep your mind from taking over. Let me mention some of these ways to you. The first thing you can do is to practice regular meditation, which is an evidence-backed way to help clear your mind of nervous chatter. On this, I would totally recommend the app Insight Timer, which has loads of free meditations. The second thing you can do is to interrupt and replace worrying and obsessive thoughts with positive mantras. For example, when I get obsessed about an issue or someone, sometimes, I quickly repeat my mantra, let that go. Another thing you can do is to eliminate unconstructive thoughts. I like to repeat my mantras, that's not true, or I'm totally worth it, when those thoughts come up. The point of all this thing is to try to calm your logical and worrying mind and just to coexist peacefully with it without allowing it to take over you. This way, you give your intuition a chance to step up to the front and be heard. The last thing you can do is to look for your inner voice pattern. To take note of your inner wisdom pattern, you have to look back on your life and gather some intuition data. Concentrate on how your inner wisdom has popped up for you in the past. You want to go back to when you had an urge to do or not do something for no logical reason. Perhaps you didn't like that person before and your instinct wanted you that something bad could happen. And that really happened. Now you can think about how that makes you feel when that person approached. And keep that feeling in mind in the future because it may also apply when danger arises. Reflect and even write down everything you felt when you got that inner voice. This way, you can learn its pattern and master how to invite your inner wisdom. You know what happens when you are connected with your higher self? Well, you fulfill your defined purposes here, and that will help you manifest all the good things in life. On this, I would totally recommend you to watch my video on manifestation scripting, which will help you speed up your manifestation process so much faster. That's it for me for today. Thank you so much for staying until the end of the video. I really appreciate being here and I'm sending you all my love from Hong Kong. Mwah. See you next time. Bye.